Hello everybody and welcome to Woodfired Weekly at Manor from Devon Cooking School. On every class that we run, somebody asks what sort of pots and pans do we need for the wood-fired oven. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. I'm just going to show you some of the things that we have and tell you how we use them. We have lots of stuff which is made out of cast iron. Cast iron is great because you can bang it around, you can heat it up to pretty much any temperature. It's not going to get damaged, it's not going to bend out of shape. There's no coating on it to pop off. So plain black cast iron is fantastic, except that it sometimes takes a little bit of a long time to heat up. So if you want to cook something quickly, you want a pan to heat up quickly, not cast iron. If you've got plenty of time and you want something which is going to distribute heat beautifully, cast iron is great. We love this pot from, uh, this is from Morso. It's a casserole pot, beautiful for overnight braises. It's got a nice lid which fits super tight, so nothing in there ever dries out. But the top also doubles as a griddle pan. So that's fantastic for steaks, chicken, when you want to get some lovely chars on a, on a char lines on a breast of chicken. You can heat this to any temperature. So I can sit that directly on a bed of embers, get that super, super hot, bang a, a ribeye steak on there for 30 seconds on both sides. The thing is done, fantastic. Quite heavy, difficult to move around sometimes. If your wrists are feeling a little bit weak, then cast iron might not be the thing for you. But we also have plenty of steel things. So these little pans are steel, quite a heavy gauge steel, and that means that they don't bend out of shape too easily. And they're also good because there's no handle, there's no long handle, just these short handles, and that means I can spin them around inside the oven. And very often we're cooking with the fire on one side of the oven or the fire at the back, it means there's a hot spot and a cool spot. So things need to get turned around a lot. So a pan with two handles that can be spun around is good. And we have a few of those. So we have that little set there, which come from a company called Big Fire. You'll find them online. We've got this one, which is cast iron and enameled. So we don't use this at high, high heat because uh, we like to see the nice orange color of it, uh, but it's, it's great. Uh, for things cooking at a slightly lower temperature and it's a favorite for cooking paella in because you can stick this then straight on the table It looks absolutely beautiful Similar thing this one heavy gauge steel from Netherton foundry uh, We like this one because it's got a lid and That means if you've got something cooking quite fast in there, but you don't want it to brown up too much You put the lid on that keeps it nice and humid uh, and it can be spun round and this is really great steel on this one, never lost its shape. Really lovely, gets used a lot. We also found this old cast iron wok in a junk shop. And I think it was sold as a bird bath or something. But it is great for stir fries, for cooking curries where we've got lots of sauce in there. Easy to spin around, give it all a stir. We use that one a lot. This piece of cast iron, also from Morso flat plate great when you want lots of surface area because you're cooking little pancakes Thai fish cakes we do on this one where we do like you know 24 Thai fish cakes at a time can all be cooking on that one surface ha huh, what else a little cast iron pan lovely for toasting spices when you're making a, a curry these I love they're French Holly found them in a second-hand shop and they're nice and flat and they're great for pancakes Nothing seems to stick to them. So I use these for little pancakes, uh, for paratas, for mesemen, for those little North African flatbreads. Really good. And they have got a handle on, so I can have two of those going at once in one oven. Boom, 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 turning things out really quickly. Lodge is a really good name, nice and light. And if you want to be cooking something pretty quickly, cooking a few patatas bravas in there, tossing them around a little bit, wonderful. Another piece of cast iron, Auntie Kay's cast iron pan. This thing, you would have to heat this to over a thousand degrees, I think, for it to lose its shape. Weighs an absolute ton. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite discolored. And that's because I use this when I want something which requires a really seriously hot pan. So burnt tomato halves, griddled squid, where I sit the pan directly over flame, get it 
close to red hot and then just throw something in which is cooked in 30 seconds. Lovely big pan, great for stir fries. I can toss things around in there. I like this one because I, I restored it and it was completely covered in a thick layer of cooked on grease. And I soaked it for about a week in alkaline to break all of that up and, and then in vinegar to get rid of the rust. And it's come up really well. And this, is, this has become our favorite tart tatin pan. Tuscan grill, we use, we use a Tuscan grill a lot these days. So this slides into the oven over a bed of embers underneath there. You're getting direct heat from the embers because this is cast iron, this is from Morso as well. Lovely bit of cast iron. That gets really hot. You put a steak on there or chops or sausages where you want those lovely char marks and you want it to cook over a direct heat. Great for tandoori style skewers. And then some old pans. This one gets used for cooking focaccia, for roasting potatoes. If it ever had any kind of coating, it's long gone. And yeah, it's been, we've been using this for years and years. This one, if you want lovely portions of fish cooked in here, you can lay them all out nicely. You can cook easily a dozen portions of fish at once in a little flat tray like this. And then a couple of old tins like this. We use this one to make little patty pan pakoras. This one for Yorkshire puddings and little, uh, we do these little egg breakfast muffins. Not for high temperatures because this one has got a coating. So this is non-stick and whenever you've got non-stick, you don't really want to be much above 250 degrees because there is a chance that you pop the non-stick off and that ends up in your food and it's no longer non-stick. So we often get asked whether we do a lot of work on these to keep them in, in good condition. And the obvious answer from this one, is no we don't and it used to be the case that when people just had cast iron and nobody had a teflon pan they kept at least one of their pans as a pan for frying for frying eggs for doing omelets pancakes or things like that which was kept really nicely and really non-stick so they cleaned it with a little bit of salt and then rubbed oil into it and sometimes baked it wet that oil in and that created this lovely non-stick surface we don't worry about that too much. If you're using a pan like this one as a stewing pot, a braising pot, don't need to worry about non-stick. This one, when we cook a tart tatin, we tend to line it with a piece of parchment paper. When we're using this old thing to bake bread, it just has some oil in there that doesn't stick if it's, if it's a focaccia bread. So we don't worry too much about um, looking after these things. So a little wash in nice soapy water and that's pretty much it. So that's a quick run through of the sorts of pots and pans we have at the school. They're by no means a definitive list and nobody needs to rush out and see if they can replicate all of this. You'll find your own way. But cast iron and good steel, if you find any of that that you like the look of, grab hold of it while you can. Thanks very much for watching. We'll provide a little blog and write some details about some of this as well, so you can have a look at that and we'll put the link below. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.